Sorry, there's Prince playing in the background, so. So anyway, all right, here we are again. Ron Jones from Dialogues and Diversity. Still talking with Jeff. Um, so we're coming around into the into the home stretch here, and um, um, and as I was saying before, this is the most important part to me, because for so many people who work in social justice work, who work in cultural awareness, who work in these spaces where you're really trying to make people understand that you know we're we're all sort of in it together, you know, there are certain quarters and factions of that that world, you know white supremacy, white nationalism, uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and so on, where because of all the damage that's done uh, to those who, you know, basically catch all that blowback, sometimes it's hard to hold on to hope. And as I said to you, I believe that you have a special, in many respects, unique mandate because your story... I think is an example of the hope that so many of people like me are looking for to keep us in the fight, not just the fight to help those people who need our help, you know, who have been hurt, but those people who we can help because they don't know they're hurting yet. And if we just show them enough love or care or compassion, um, just like was shown to you by people like Daryl, you can hopefully um, let that in become transformed by it and then take that transformation and do what nobody else can do from because of the perspective and the point of view that you came from to that place so i'd love to hear from you about what's going on with you now what you're doing we know you were here at encore but what are some of the other things you got going on speak to me brother all right so well this is the this is the positive part yes so um, I run a nonprofit. I uh, started a nonprofit called Beyond Barriers, and Beyond Barriers has a team, Daryl Davis, as we mentioned earlier, right. and uh, a whole lot of other amazing people. From some are former white nationalists, some are uh, individuals with uh, from black backgrounds, Jewish backgrounds, all, all different, multi-ethnic right. uh, and multi-racial uh, right. organization, and we come together to try to make a difference. And bring people out. So we work in extremist disengagement, um, de-radicalization, and um, you know through dialogue, through civil discourse, through relational dialogue. You know we're trying to reach people and, and change lives and save lives. And I want to preface that by saying, um, I, I've had criticism, of yeah. course, and I, oh, yeah. I understand that. It happened at this conference, of course. Yeah. So I, I, I understand that, um, and and. Uh, I empathize with it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's it's not it, coming from the background that I come from. I understand. I would hope that you do. Um, it's and it's interesting just to speak to that. Um, you know, for those who listen to me, do whatever I do, listen to my little things, my little blurbs and Instagram posts, or you've read any of the stuff I put up on my blog posts, you know, I'm all about radical compassion. I'm all about giving the type of grace that you would want for yourself in your worst moment or time for the sake of true healing. And sometimes that asks of all of us. It asks of those who are doing the work and it asks of those who need the work. Um, and so for those people who criticize you, you know, for a lot of them, like, you, like you said, I get it. I get it, but at the same time, I'm not sure what what the big nefarious end game could be if you're putting yourself out here like this because just like gangland, if you leave the gang, you done. And it's not like they're just gonna oh he just had he just had a prodigal son moment. You know, let's just take him back in and order a turkey sandwich and we'll all talk about his adventures among tolerance. There is no going there back. There is no going back. Once, once you, uh, you can leave, but once you go out, once you leave and you start speaking against it, there is no going You're back. You're done. You're done. Yeah. So so that that's uh, that narrative doesn't fit right. uh, in that sense. Right. But what I wanted to say was about, you know, I understand one of the criticisms is that I've heard, not not here, but one of the criticisms that I heard when I first got out is, well, he just wants to save all his old Nazi friends, hmm. you know, about getting people out. And I thought, well, 
I do want to save those people, but for me, that's not the motivation. Right. That's bonus. That's that's additional bonus. That's right. nice. But if we offer it, the next mosque shooter, the next church shooter, the next synagogue shooter, the next mass murderer right. that's taken this hate to the next level, that's going to go kill people. Right. How many innocent lives have we saved by that? That's right. what motivates me. Right. It's yeah. not saving that one person here, one person there. It's the potential victims, countless amount of victims that could be damaged by that ideology and that person. Exactly. And, and just to go back to... Uh, the whole saving thing. I mean, first off, and more important than anything else, you're saving yourself. For what human spirit, soul, whatever people want to hold on to in reference to that, you are bringing light back into your own spirit. And then you are doing, like I said, what so many others can't. You hopefully can take that light and shine it where it's needed the most. I, Ron, I feel like I have that responsibility. Yeah. That's that's what drives me. Yeah. You know, because it would have been easier to just walk away yeah. or stay. Yeah, or, or, or and, stay. Yeah, like yeah. being on the top in that right. world, it was easy. Right. Was it the right thing? No, it was absolutely wrong. Right. And when I figured that out as someone that stands for what I an ideologue in, right. in a lot of ways, right. I couldn't as a human being continue in that life, even if it was easier. Right. I couldn't do it any longer. So yeah. when I learned what I was doing was so damaging, I'm compelled now to give back to humanity. Yeah. This is my way to, 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 to redemption, I hope. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think... Well, I mean, that part is on you. Mm. As, as I told you before, um, rather than saying, you know, you're not worthy of people's, you know... Um, um, what, what was the term you used? Um... You know, you're not worthy of forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness. Mm. What I like to believe you are is forgiveness in process. You're working on your and others' forgiveness. and But you have to forgive yourself first because if that hate stays inside of you, it'll just kill you in a different way. Um, and number two, for every person who... You even put a small crack in that armor of their pain, their resistance, their racial intractability, their supremacist thinking. Once again, that's maybe it's not your do- job to break that armor open, but you put a crack in it. And that's where I put so many other white people on blast. The idea here is that if more of you were plugged into the fight, and you shouldn't have to go this far to understand how important it is, but if more of you just plugged in and really put yourself in the role of the person who makes the world they want to live in, not just for yourself, but for all your brothers and sisters along God's spectrum, all of us, I guarantee you, you shine your light brighter your soul gets brighter it sometimes doesn't feel that way but i guarantee you there are people out there in moments you may not expect and they're going to appreciate that you were there for them and that's why i'm trying to be here for you my friend you know this idea that like i said if this is some if this is some wacky you know supremacist plot super deep and convoluted you know I'm going to hold, I, I will be sad and I'll be disappointed, but guess what? I at least took a chance on you. And I will hold on to every drop of good that came out of this, this period with you. And that's the message. That's the message. We only are as good as our deeds and our actions. And, and so what I want to leave everybody with is that if this is a, this man, a man who basically spent close to three decades of his life, you know, grinding things down, you know, you know, submitting to an agenda and the narrative of hate and ignorance and bias, and that sadly, even in a case that you were loosely connected to, well, not directly, but loosely connected to, led to the death of someone. If this is someone who can find the road to redemption and start to walk it, what does that say about all of you who already think well of yourselves? What does that say to all of you who already call yourself doing the work? You know, regardless where you find yourself on the spectrum, know that Ron Jones loves you. 
loves you with all of my heart. You know, I got this this big, muscly, fleshy thing inside of me, and it pumps for you. Because what, did that sound appropriate? What does that? It maybe you know what I mean. Yeah. You know what I mean. The idea here is that. I love you because you're worthy of it until you give me absolutely every reason to not believe it. And in the time between now and then, know that I'm your ally. And I'll do the best I can for you. I may fail. I may fail, but, you know, I'm never going to give up. My brother? Yes, indeed, my friend. And I echo 100% just everything you just said. <laughs> you got an ally for life, buddy. All right, man. All right. So listen, Jeff, give everybody your 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 things, your like where they can find your work, where they can get in touch with you if they want to, the whole nine. So I'm Jeff Scoop with Beyond Barriers. That's beyondbarriersusa.org. Check out our uh, organization, all the things we're doing, our podcast, Beyond Barriers podcast, um, social media. You can find it all on that website, beyondbarriersusa.org. Yeah. All right. And remember... I love you. You know why? Because sometimes I can't get to jello. See you. <laughs>